Good evening, everyone. I was tempted to say happy Sabbath just now. <laughs> it's like Sabbath every day here, amen? amen? And we come together in fellowship and we know that God is a center. It's, it's like Sabbath. And I could not imagine what heaven will be like. It's like going to be Sabbath every single day, seeing the Lord. Amen? amen? And oh, I'm so thankful. There's a lot of blessings that I could, I could barely breathe. <laughs> My stomach is getting full. <laughs> and uh, it's not just, it's not just the, the physical blessing of having food, but a wonderful blessing of fellowship, wonderful blessing of, of being with people who are so in love with God. And every conversation is just a blessing. Amen? Amen. And I don't want this week to end. And I'm sad that I'm, I'm going to be leaving next, uh, next week, but I'm going to go to another week of prayer. So it's another adventure, another blessing that I'd like to, to look forward to. And this, this evening, as, uh, as I have promised this, uh, this morning, is going to be a continuation of, of what I shared with you this morning. Uh, what's the song again? That, uh, no, the, the song that, that uh, somehow I talked about this, this morning. Tis so sweet. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Amen. And then there's another song. I don't know if you know this scripture song, Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9. You know that song? For my thoughts are not your thoughts. So you have not sung that song yet. I'd like, I, I'd like, to, I'd like to, to run over that just, just, uh, just two times. Maybe we'll not learn it tonight. We'll learn it uh, some other time. So it, it sounds like this. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. It's awesome, isn't it? The voice is not that awesome, but the tune is awesome, amen? <laughs> So let, let me try that again with you. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. It's more awesome than you join in because my voice gets drowned out. It's beautiful, isn't it? Just that thought alone, that his thoughts are not our thoughts, and his ways are not our ways. And when the Lord tells us, be still and know that I am God, God is telling you sometimes, when we have ideas, I know I have brilliant ideas, <laughs> I thought, and sometimes we have ideas on how to solve our own situation, the Lord is somehow telling us, be still and know that I am God. In my own version, it's just like, Jem, shut up. I have a solution for this, so shut up. I have, I know, because I'm God, so be still. Friends, if we're still before the presence of God, life would become sweeter. Would you believe that? Amen? For his thoughts are not our thoughts, and his ways are not our ways. We, we just learned last night that the way to fight the battle was what? To be on your knees. Which battle do you go to that you, you go forward on your knees? And the choir is ahead. So God's ways are not our ways, and his ways always wins. Amen? Even though it looks foolish in the sight of men, it always wins. Because whatever the Lord says so, it will happen so. With that being said, I'd like, to, I'd like to request those who are able to kneel down to please kneel down with me for a word of prayer. Oh, dear Father, once again, we'd like to come before you and offer you our praises, our grateful hearts, thanking you, O oh Lord, for the many things that we do not deserve that you have given us. And most especially, dear Father, we praise you for you are such an amazing God, a wonderful Father, a loving Father, a caring father who takes care about the things that we do not even care about. Every time we touch our hair, we are reminded that you know the very numbers of our hair. 
So Lord, we praise you and we thank you for taking so much care of the things that we do not even care about. That just goes to show, oh Lord, how much do you desire to get involved in each and every life here. Lord, I pray that tonight we will have the reality of, of knowing that you desire to lead us. So Lord, I ask that tonight soften our hearts and open our understanding and help us to know, oh Lord, that the only way to know the way is to let you lead us. So dear God, I pray that you please pour upon us a full measure of your spirit and hide me once again, dear Father, behind the shadow of your cross. I will not be seen nor be heard, but Jesus and Jesus alone be seen, be heard, be lifted up and exalted. For we pray this in the loving name of your son Jesus, all your children say, amen. amen. I'd like to ask this question before I go on. How many of you here would spend considerable amount of time praying and waiting for God's leading before you make a move? I see a few hands. Because most of the time, the problem is really waiting, isn't it? It's better that, that you work and work and work and go and go and go. But the waiting is really difficult. It's waiting most of the time, we consider that as a waste of time. But my dear friends, waiting on God is never a waste of time. Can you say amen to that? I, I'd like to share with you something that just happened like last night. I was, I'm so excited to share things about this. I'm working with, with a youth group back in the Philippines. They're called PYC, Philippine Youth for Christ. And they're like the, the GYC in the Philippines. And for the past years, we've been trying our very best to somehow run a conference. And you know, back in the Philippines, uh, it's third world. And a lot of things are so dependent on, on this. Even here, huh? Especially back there. And especially when, when you are surrounded with a group of young people who does not have resources, people who are <laughs> poor as a rat like you. <laughs> so we've been trying to do things the way, the way the past people do things. We observe a lot of, of ways that they do things. We raise funds, we solicit, we do caroling, we do everything in our power to raise these funds. And I'll give you an idea, friends. In the Philippines, if you have like a registration fee for your youth conference that's like $5, no one would attend. <laughs> that's too expensive. And PYC, you know how much our registration? It's $35. And around 900 plus young people shows up because they're seeking for this walk with God. But that $35, everything goes, everything goes to the expenses. There's no, there's nothing that is really spared for like contingency fund. Everything is, is just crazy and crazy expensive and we could not afford it. So for the past years, especially when, when we started it all over again, three years in a row, we were trying to make our own ways and we did not ask God what to do. We just went in and somehow, Lord, these this ways are good, so please bless it. For the next three years, we were so stressed out. So stressed out. Our ways did not amount to anything. And on the fourth year, somehow the Lord got our attention. And the Lord somehow caused us to be on our knees. We faced trials and very, very big trials. Praise God for trials, amen? Because trials will really bring you on your knees. <laughs> when you don't know what to do, you are desperate to be on your knees. Most of the time, we are waiting for trials to be on our knees. So praise God for the trial, and it was a difficult trial, and we don't know what to do, so we plead before God. As a group, we, we were crying, we were weeping before God. And you know what the Lord's leading for us? It's not to solicit, it's not to do a uh, solicitation or donation campaign, the Lord's leading for us was to have a self-denial fund, sacrifice. And I'm thinking, Lord, even if you squeeze us dry, we will not be able to come up even one-eighth or one-fifth of the whole event's cost. And I'm thinking, the Lord's ways are so crazy. But then we got reminded by the beautiful story of the five loaves of bread and the two fish. Remember? The five loaves of bread and the two fish are already enough for that story. 
But in the end, the Lord showed us by the crumbs <laughs> that was gathered, how many baskets? 12 baskets. Does that make sense? It doesn't make sense. That's why the Lord is making us realize that His ways doesn't make sense, but it's immeasurable results. Amen? This is what the Lord is trying to tell us, that His ways does not, does not make sense, but it gives solution to the situation and it will yield an overflow. So the time that we relied on the Lord, we asked for the Lord's leading, and the Lord somehow compelled us to do sacrificially giving, sacrificial giving, and it's funny because this goes like this. For example, if you want to buy a shirt and you saw, uh, maybe I don't need a shirt. <laughs> I have so much shirt back home, so I'll put it in a self-sacrificing, self-denial fund. If I go to McDonald's, uh, that's not healthy. I'll put it in a self-denial fund. <laughs> All those things add up, and you know how much was a self-denial fund? It was a total, grand total of $600. When you see $600, it's nothing. And you know what? Our cost, our cost, was 30,000 plus US dollars. And you know what happened? The Lord kept on giving solution. Before, we will be able to pay out everything a month after or two months after. But the moment we relied on the Lord, His mysterious ways, a week before the event, we paid off everything. <laughs> and by the way, friends, this is another mind-blowing thing because that year we transferred to a venue that is like more than five times the cost of the previous three venues and this year it's supposed to be impossible and we were able to pay off one week before the event started and then the next year I'm thinking Lord I don't know if it's gonna happen again <laughs> sometimes we doubt don't we when we experience those great miracles, and then there's another challenge that's similar to that, we're thinking, is it gonna happen again? Because this year, that year, last year, was a challenging year because it's gonna double the cost. You know why? The young people demanded, we don't want to start Wednesday. Wednesday is too short. They want to start Monday. So like the conference was like a week of prayer. <laughs> and friends, guess what? Three months before the event, everything was paid off. And this year, and last year I was so afraid. You know why I was so afraid? Because the, the money was already there before the event. I'm thinking, Lord, we don't need you that much anymore. I'm worried. I didn't even tell the group that we have sufficient funding because I, I want them to need God. <laughs> and you know what? The Lord gave us another challenge this year. We are $3,000 short before the event. And aside from that, there are a lot of missionaries who wants to come, who wants to be sponsored. And, and we don't have a choice but to sponsor them. We are $3,000 short, and you have to sponsor a group of missionaries that will cost a little more than $1,000 again. So that's like $4,000 total of deficit. But I said, what do we do? <laughs> prayed and prayed and prayed, Lord, what do you want us to do? Receive everyone who wants to come, sponsor everyone that needs to be sponsored. Friends, it was a suicide. It was a suicide. You know what happened? Just last night, just last night, I received a call. I received a message from the finance. Oh, I hope that they will not hear this. I hope that this, this recording does not reach the group right now because it's, it should be a surprise. Two weeks from now, we'll have a meeting. <laughs> And this is what happened. I was, because I heard that there was an overflow. And we expect an overflow of $600. Friends, even the overflow right now is mind blowing because we are short of 4,000 US dollars. To think about an overflow, that's already a miracle. And last night, I had, I contact with, with a finance uh, vice president and and I just found out that the overflow was more than 4,000 US dollars. More than 4,000 US dollars, friends. And God showed us the five loaves of bread and the two fish still works until now. Can you say amen? amen. His ways are far greater than our ways. 
And we are so used to leaning on our own ways most of the time. But God is telling us, let me show you what I can do. Be still. Stop thinking about your ideas. Stop thinking about your ways. Make it right with me. And I'll show you what I can do. Because there'll be overflows. Because there'll be 12 baskets in excess. Friends, God desires to do more for his people, but we do not have the faith to claim his word, to somehow trust what he can do. Friends, life would be sweeter. Do you believe so? It is so sweet to trust in Jesus, I tell you. And it's a sweeter, sweeter time when you share it among your friends. And when we come together and recollect, we are just like, we were in tears, friends, last year when we had, no, early this year when we had a meeting when we saw what God has done. But right now, I know that there'll be more tears <laughs> when they discover what God is showing us. God desires for us to take Him at His word. He'll never fail us. There's no record of Him ever failing us. Even though so many times that we have failed Him, He never failed us. So when the Lord is asking us, trust me and I will lead you, trust Him, my dear friends, it's gonna be a loss on your part if you do not. Listen to this thought. Oh, I'm just excited. Sorry. No, I don't ask for forgiveness for my excitement. Listen, a life in Christ is a life of restfulness. Amen? A life in Christ is a life of restfulness. Uneasiness, dissatisfaction, and restlessness reveal the absence of the Savior. Whoa. This is found in Mind, Character, and Personality, Volume 2, page 642, paragraph 2. An easiness, dissatisfaction, and restlessness reveal the absence of the Savior. And friends, that's, that's the time that I, I was feeling like I was so uneasy. Remember the time that I was asking instruction from the Lord, and the Lord somehow compelled me, be still and know that I am God. Jem, you are not in charge. The situation is not in charge. I am. Trust me, whatever situation it is, I can manage. I can handle. If it's a financial situation, he can. If it's a relationship situation, he can. Friends, God sees the end from the beginning. We don't. That's why he offered to us, I will instruct you and what? and teach you in the way that you should go, I will guide you with mine eye. We established this morning that, that we don't know what's gonna happen next week. We don't know what's gonna happen five minutes from now. We don't know what's gonna happen 30 seconds from now. You don't even know that I'm gonna do this. <laughs> Only he knows. I think you think I'm gonna do that again or no. It's another thing, but God knows, amen? He is the only one who knows. And when he says to you, I will instruct, I will teach, and I will guide, my dear friends, take that offer. You'll never get lost. You'll never regret, because that's the only way to enjoy the life with Christ. So let me continue on with my story. Remember that story about, about Sarah, about, in, about that meeting? For those of you who who are not here this morning, please raise your hand. Just watch the recording. Okay. <laughs> okay. Watch the recording. So now, I have another story there in that, uh, in that timeshare resort. So while I was there, and I'm thinking, oh, Lord, there is this one challenge. When you are a timeshare guest, you have to attend a timeshare seminar. A timeshare seminar. Oh, I have a video to show. Oh, not a video to show. A picture to show. Let me go down, I'm sorry. You don't have to follow me, camera. <laughs> There's a commercial break, and now I'm back. <laughs> okay, there's this, uh, there's this very interesting uh, experience in that place, and uh, Friends, you know what timeshare is? Timeshare is, uh, and please, a little advice for those who are switching, please don't switch to the picture 
because I have not asked permission from the person. So, so what happened was there was this, there was this uh, arrangement. If you are a timeshare guest, you have to attend a timeshare seminar. Timeshare is like an ownership of a, re, of like a program that they have in the resort. It costs a lot of money, a lot of investment. So, so what happened was. Let's switch to that picture first. It's not that uh, story, but let's just put it there. And friends, what happened was, I was supposed to, to attend a seminar, and I'm thinking, this is gonna be a waste of my time. Because what will I, what will I invest? I don't have money to invest in a timeshare. And I'm thinking, it's gonna be a waste of my time and a waste of the time of the agent, of the person who's, uh, who's gonna interview me. <laughs> but they are so persistent. And Three days before, they already gave you a call. And by the way, friends, I stayed in that resort six nights, seven days. So three days before, they gave you a call. And the night before, they follow up. And the next morning, the next morning, they show up. He shows up. A person shows up in my, in my door five minutes before the appointment, knocking on my door. When I opened, there was this guy like six foot two, big muscular guy like mine. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy says, oh, Mr. Castor, I'm your agent. I'm thinking, I have an agent. <laughs> and I told him, just call me Jen. And it's quite shameful later on that he calls you so formal, Mr. Castor, and he'll discover that you don't have money to invest in timeshare. So I told him, just call me Jen. So he waited for me, and then when we went out, so he was walking in front of me. So I look like I have a bodyguard. I look like a Chinese drug lord walking behind him. So, and by the way, this is the guy. This is the guy who was waiting. Don't put him in, on the screen. So there was a guy who was waiting. His name, by the way, is Andres. So, so Andres was waiting for me, and then he, he, he gave me a ride to his golf, with his golf cart and brought me to the office, and he sat me down, and he said, uh, Mr. Castor, and told him, just call me Jem. So he said, okay, Mr. Jem, just Jem. <laughs> I said, so, okay, Jem. So I have some series of questions that I want to ask you. And I said, okay. So I just want to know, how often do you do vacations like this? And I said, every week. And he said, every week? Okay, he listed down. I could see the <laughs> smile on his face. Like, yes, this is a good sale here. And then he asked me the next question, and he, he said, so how much do you spend for vacations like this? And I said, nothing. He said, what? <laughs> and I said, nothing. What do you mean nothing? I said, zero. I said, why? He said, because I can't afford vacations like this. And I said, oh, I'm sorry. And, and I told him, because I'm a missionary. And then when he heard the word missionary, it's just like his whole shoulders just dropped, like, oh, you're a missionary. <laughs> And then he said this, this next line, said, tell me about it. When he said, tell me about it, it's like ding, 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 testimony time. <laughs> so the seminar, the, the timeshare seminar became a testimony time, became a missionary workshop. So I was sharing my testimony to him and little by little, his demeanor began to change. His, he put down his pen, he put down the paper, and begin listening in and listening in. And then he began to open up himself. He told me about the failed marriage that he had back in Colombia. He told me about the two daughters that he missed back home. And then he told me about the failed relationships that he had in the US. And then he told me about how he missed going to the church. He was a Catholic altar boy when he was growing up. And for the last like seven years, for the last like seven years, he has not gone back to the church. So, and while we were talking about this, we talked for, for like an hour. And then after an hour, he said, oh, Jem, I'm sorry, but I have to take you to another, to another place, another venue here in the resort, because I want to show you the luxurious place here. But don't worry, we don't have, about, we don't have to talk about timeshare. We could continue talking about this. <laughs> and friends, you know what they tell you? It's, it's only 30 minutes, they're lying. <laughs> It's like three hours, it's like half a day. So we were there, but we were not actually talking about timeshare. We, were, we continually talk about God. 
about what he has done. So at the end of that conversation, while, while I was uh, being led to another office, he said, oh, Brother Je uh, Jem, uh, he did not call me brother. <laughs> I said, Jem, uh, there's one last thing that, uh, that you need to do. And I said, what is that? You have to sit down with our supervisor. The supervisor will, will close the deal. And I know there's no deal to be closed, but uh, just bear with it. He said, okay. And then the supervisor handed him the paper and he said, oh, so I see here, Mr. Castor, that you are a missionary. He said, yes. So I'll give you a hypothetical question. What if you have a new career? And he said, no, 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 no. I'll, I don't want another career. I die as a missionary. And I said, okay, okay, let's change the situation. What if you receive a huge amount of money? Will you invest it in timeshare? I said, no. Will you, where will you invest the money then? To the missions. <laughs> and he realized this conversation is pointless for him. <laughs> so he dismissed me. And now me and the guy, Andres, were walking. And he went back to his, to his golf cart. And he told me, Jem, I know that uh, I could not ask much from you, but I have one request. And I said, what is that, Andres? Yeah, can you, can you include me in your prayer? And then I told him, you know what, Andres, I have a better idea. When we go back to the room where you, where you picked me up, let's go there and pray. And pray now. So we were there, we knelt down. I reached with his tall, <laughs> tall arm. And then we prayed. And while I was praying, like the way I prayed for Sarah, I was asking God, Lord, please give me the right words. This might be the only time that I'll be praying for this guy. So I had like a two-minute prayer for Andres. And after that, I went and, and got some books, got some DVDs that I got from the GC session. Remember, this is 2015. So I gave the books and the, and the DVD to him and I told him, Andres, I'm so sorry I wasted your day. You could have closed a better deal with some people, but somehow I'm your guest. <laughs> and then he said, what are you talking about, Jim? This is the biggest deal of my life. I gave Andres a hug. We exchanged, we exchanged contacts. And, and friends, I realized, remember I was frustrated? Remember this morning? I was so frustrated that the Lord canceled the trip and rerouted my flight. Now I know why. Because he wants to reach Andres. He canceled the trip that I was so upset, that I was so disappointed not knowing that God has other plans. He wants to reach Andres. Isn't our God an awesome God, friends? Isn't our God an amazing God? That he will reroute the trip of this, of this missionary just to reach those people in the resort, just to reach Sarah. And guess what? Almost a year have passed. And then I saw in my Instagram, there is a message. And I opened my Instagram. It's Andres. That's how I got his picture, by the way. <laughs> And I thought, oh, it's Andres. And then he, he messaged me, hey, bro, how are you? Where has the Lord brought you? And I said, oh, Andres, I'm sorry. I was not able to, to communicate with you well. And then so we caught up. And then, friends, I looked at my Facebook. My Facebook has a friend request from him. I looked at his, his profile. And the first thing that caught my attention was his cover photo. His cover photo says, don't forget what God has done for you. And then when I looked and scrolled on his wall, it was all about God. Amen. And I just broke down in front of my, of my computer, seeing what the Lord is doing in his life. And I'm thinking, Lord, you did not have, you don't have to show me this. But God is good. He wants to encourage us to trust him because his ways are better than our ways for his thoughts are way higher than our thoughts and his plans are awesome and when i look back friends when i look back and i begin to realize this, this beautiful verse jeremiah 29 verse 11 what does that say for i know the what the thoughts or the plans i have for you says the lord god has a plan for us but most of the time, we don't get to see what his plans for us is. You know why? 
because we are so solid in our own plans. We have our own plans that the Lord does not have a space for His plans for our lives. That's the reason why, my dear friends, we don't get to enjoy what God's plans for our lives is because we think, this is my plan, I'm sticking with it. That's what we always do. And as a result, we don't get to see the best that God has prepared for us. Friends, listen to this thought. This blew my mind. From Testimony Treasures, Volume 2, page 188, paragraph 1, it says, There is a necessity for the Lord Himself to give His own ideas to the soul. Can you say amen? amen. There is a necessity. It is impossible important for the Lord to give his own ideas to the soul. Why come up with your own ideas when God desires to give you his ideas? What a waste of time when we just come together and think about our ideas when God has a perfect idea for us. Did you get this? And we have an idea of how ourselves will progress. You have an idea of how your relationship would work because you're thinking that this relationship, I have to put everything in it because this will make me happy. Friends, God has the best ideas. And it says in the beautiful gift of the spirit of prophecy, it says, all heaven will unite with man in his pursuit for true happiness. Can you say amen to that? All heaven will unite with you in your pursuit to gain true happiness. Stop pursuing it on your own. Did you get this? Do not pursue it on your own because when you pursue it on your own, you'll never find it. It will be elusive. And when people tell me, Jem, why aren't you married? I said, I give it to the Lord. And then people will tell me, you have to do your part. I said, that's my part, give it to Him. That is my part, giving to him. I did my part before and I was not happy in the end. And guess, get this, young people. I'm more in love now compared to the time that I had a relationship. That amen is so weak. Amen. That amen is so weak that the, the light just <laughs> died out. <laughs> <laughs> On cue, guys. <laughs> like, amen. <laughs> You are not so convinced. Thank you. Thank you, Light. That's a very good emphasis. Friends, this is one thing that we are thinking about. We're thinking that the only way to be happy is to end up with someone that you love. Friends, if that's the case, there'll be no divorce right now. Finding happiness is not finding someone. Finding the true happiness is finding God. Even if you have the right person, if you have not found God, you'll ruin that person's life. Find him. With or without somebody in your life, you'll be the happiest person. Amen. You know what, right now? I don't desire to be married. If God gives me that desire, then praise God. <laughs> but right now, no. Because I'm thinking, I don't want to ruin what I have with God right now. I don't want to make another foolish choice. So I give the choice to God. That's our only safety. And friends, when you found him, your cheekbones will hurt smiling. <laughs> this is what God desires for his children to be. He wants you to be the most joyful creature in this world. He wants you to, to tell people about the God that you serve because the God you serve is a God of joy. Amen? Didn't he say in Psalm 16 verse 11 in his presence is what? Not just joy, but fullness of joy. Amen? At his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. All the while I thought when we talk about pleasures, it's always attached to the world, isn't it? Friends, the world's pleasure is fake. The true author of pleasure is God. Amen? And that is the pleasure that has no consequence. That is the pleasure that when you wake up at night, you're not hangover. <laughs> That's the pleasure that when you wake up in the morning, you are not regretting what you did the night before. That is the pleasure that will, that will make you beam. That is the pleasure that somehow 
comes out of your smile. And the moment you walk in the room, people will take notice. I want what she has. I want what he has. Friends, you could not find it apart from the presence of God. Psalm 16, verse 11. In his presence is what? Fullness of joy. Very simple logic, friends. I want to leave this to you. In his presence is what? For example, this, this elevated place here is his presence. If I'm here, what do I experience? Fullness of joy. Not just joy, but fullness of joy. When I'm here, do I still have it? Simple, isn't it? Some people say, ah, oh, maybe. No! <laughs> Simple logic. You moved out of his presence, you don't get the benefit. You don't get the joy. And whenever I'm not joyful, you know what does that mean? I moved out of his presence. Did you get this? Whenever I'm not joyful, whenever I'm, I'm, I'm uneasy again, dissatisfied and all, I moved out of his presence. What's the logical thing to do? <laughs> go back. And friends, don't go on the edge. Go at the center. <laughs> Go at the center where you will not be tempted to jump out. <laughs> Go at the center. Stay in the middle of his presence because he desires you to be there. Amen? Amen. Isn't it exciting to talk about the presence of God? Huh? If you want to be romantic, friends, stay in his presence. I tell you, I have more, <laughs> I have more love story to tell than my friends who have partners. <laughs> And it's crazy because you know what? My friends who have boyfriends, girlfriends, and sometimes wife and husband, they are the ones who come to you for advice. I'm thinking, advice from a single guy who's never married? I'm thinking, you know why are they asking for advice at Jam? Uh, it's, it's rocky right now and the joy is gone. I'm thinking, uh, are you in the presence of God? Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> friends, it's not an assurance to find that someone, because I know we are in the age right now of searching. Divert your searching of searching God. Amen? You could not control your emotions right now, surrender it to the Lord. You could not control your attractions. Give it to the Lord, my dear friends. You'll never regret having that beautiful relationship with God. Because there's no man that could ever satisfy a woman. There's no woman that could ever satisfy a man unless that man or a woman is satisfied with God. Amen. Preach it. <laughs> okay. Can I share one more story? I just asked that for fun. You don't have any choice. I'll share it anyway. <laughs> okay. So now, I went back, I went back to, to the Philippines and two months, uh, no, no, what, the moment I went back to the Philippines, I had a, a message from the general conference. I said, Jem, please go to GYC. That's 2015, GYC in Kentucky. Go to, the Philipp uh, so, to Kentucky and, and, uh, and please vol volunteer in, in the booth and, and promote revival and reformation during the conference. So I somehow uh, booked my ticket and of course, you want to book the lowest ticket, the price, the lowest price, because the church is paying for it. So friends, I looked at the ticket and I strategically booked a 4 a.m. flight because Manila during that time is under construction. They're, they're repairing this overpass. They're, they're, they're repairing this uh, uh, skyway so that there'll be no traffic for those who are going to the airport. But during that time, it's a terrible traffic so I'm thinking, I have to leave at 11 in the evening to be in the airport on time. So friends, I was waiting and waiting for taxis, but these taxis, they, they charge me like $12. The fare is only $3 from where I am to that place. And these people thought that I'm a foreigner. They thought I was Korean. <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm a local. <laughs> And then they will charge me. And, and friends, I got so frustrated. 45 minutes of haggling, of taxi rejection and all. I got tired. I'm thinking, oh Lord, if, if this lasts 
taxi. I don't know what, what I'm going to do. And the taxi somehow brought down to the price of, I guess, $7. It's still expensive. And I'm thinking, okay, I'll just go. So $7. And I felt that I was cheated. I was, felt, I, I was feeling that I got taken advantage of. I'm thinking, how dare he take advantage of God's little missionary? So, <laughs> so I was in his taxi. And this taxi driver, while he was driving, he was pouring out all his frustration, all his bad experiences, all, all the things that, that was not happening right in his life. And he told me about how bad his, his trip was yesterday. And he only had a little amount of money. I'm thinking, he's telling me this because he wants a tip. I'll never give him a tip. So I was not so happy. And he keeps on, on and on. And just imagine stuck in the traffic for nearly an hour with that with that thing, and I'm thinking, Lord, I do not have the patience for this. And I gave him a heavenly rebuke. I told him, sir, stop complaining. And, and I told him, I have not even received a salary for the past five years of my life. <laughs> and then he, he told me, really? But why are you flying out international? Because the, the terminal is an international terminal. And I told him, because I'm a missionary said, oh, so you're a missionary, tell me about it. So I was telling him my testimony, but I was not, I was not even aware that that was a ding, ding, ding moment. <laughs> because I was so upset. I was telling him in the middle of our conversation, I realized, whoa, this is a ding, ding, ding moment. <laughs> and you know what, friends, this is crazy because before I left the house, I was praying, Lord, please give me a mission. And God was giving me a mission and I was not even aware that that was the mission already because I was so focused on the injustice that was done to me. So in the middle of our conversation, while I was sharing with him, I was just asking, him, oh Lord, please forgive me. So at the end of our conversation, when he dropped me off in the airport, I told him, excuse me, brother. I said, yes, can I pray for you? I said, uh, uh, before he could say no, I put my hand on his shoulder and prayed for him. <laughs> So after I prayed for him, it's a quick prayer. The moment I opened my eyes, like Sarah, he was folding his hands and I said, whoa, whoa, this has never happened to me before. And I said, I told him, God bless you. I tap him on his shoulder because he's still clinging on to his, to his, to his hand. God bless you. And I went out of his taxi, went to the trunk, I opened the trunk, it's locked. I said, hey, brother, I want my bags. <laughs> so he opened the trunk, he went out, and he grabbed my hand, and he said, I hope you could ride in my taxi again. This is really a blessed day for me. Friends, I gave him a hug, and I gave him a tip. <laughs> <laughs> and while I was pulling my bag towards the terminal, the Lord spoke to me, you almost missed your mission. Because I was so focused on myself. I was so focused on the injustice that was done to me that I almost missed what I asked God for. Isn't it crazy? And then I realized, oh Lord, so many things like this that I have missed because I focus so much on myself. So while I was there waiting for, waiting for, for the counter to open, I arrived around, I guess, around one or, or two o'clock. And we were waiting for the counter to open, and I was, it was a long line now. And all of a sudden, I saw people talking to each other and pointing to, to the gate. You know what that means? Somebody famous came in. So there was this lady. You know, Philippines, Philippines is so huge when it comes to beauty contest. Huh? So when, friends, there's only two ceasefire and wars in the Philippines that happens, the boxing of Manny Pacquiao and beauty contest. When it's boxing, there's no traffic. <laughs> Beauty contest, men, women, child, adults, they all watch. So they are so big about, about this. And this lady, she was one of our first beauty queens. She's an actress, producer, director, comedian, and drama actress and all. And their family is known. So when, they, when she walked in together with, with his kids and his entourage, her entourage, the Lord spoke to my heart. There's your next mission. I said, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> and, and the lady, since she was late, she walked 
the end of the line, and I said, you see, Lord, she's so far. <laughs> so remember, this trip is a cheap ticket. We have a layover in China, and my layover was 11 hours. <laughs> and if you have a layover in China, my dear friends, even if you don't stay in China, you have, you have to have your passports checked. So you have this long queue. So we were lining up, and all of a sudden, my dear friends, when I turned around, guess who's behind me? That was her. So, and I said, and the Lord spoke to my heart, she's not so far anymore, huh? <laughs> okay. So I said, how do I start a conversation? So I took my phone and said, excuse me, Miss Mel, can we have selfie? <laughs> You see, friends, even useless thing like selfie could be used. <laughs> so we did selfie, and then we began to talk. And it's like a 45-minute queue. So we begin to talk, we begin to open up. And remember, there's a lot of Filipinos in this flight. The Filipinos were looking at us, wondering, who's this new boyfriend of that girl? <laughs> He's too short. <laughs> so, so we had a conversation at the end of 45 minutes. So we said goodbye, and, and I said goodbye. And I think, oh, Lord, I've done my mission. So I went back and thinking, Lord, please forgive me. I was, not, I was not in my right mind this morning with the taxi and all because I have not spent time with you. So I spent the time. I, I spent that whole like eight hours <laughs> with God. I, I wanted to be selfish with the Lord. <laughs> after that eight hours, after I had breakfast and all, I was walking around the airport and then the PA of that lady somehow appeared, and he said, oh, yeah, Kuya, or brother, uh, Miss Mel is looking for you. And I said, what? She's looking for me? <laughs> I'm thinking, why? I said, oh, she needs help with her MacBook. I'm thinking, I'm a PC user. <laughs> and I'm not even so good when it comes to technology on my PC, but she's looking for, for me, and she's wanting for help, so I went. And make long story short, I was useless. So. <laughs> Because of my uselessness, we laughed. And we talked and talked. And friends, this lady opened up about her life. I got to know about, about her life. She has six kids from like four different husbands. And two of her kids, two of her kids had autism. The first one was 15 years old during the time. And right now he's 20. The other one was 26, now he's 31. And she was about to file a divorce from her husband. Her husband is a lawyer, and her husband holds all the property under his name. And, and friends, she had a very difficult life. And the more I talked to her, the more my respect for this woman grew. And I begin to realize this is a strong woman. This is an awesome lady here. So we talked for nearly two hours. And before, before we ended the conversation, the Lord spoke to my heart, now it's time to pray for her. So I asked her, Ms. Mel, can I pray for you? The moment she heard me said, can I pray for you? She grabbed both of my hands and wrapped it over her, her hands and said, let's do it. So while I was praying, I was asking, Lord, please, please put the prayers on my lips. I don't want that this, I don't want that this, this words will be my words. I want it to be your words. That's not her. <laughs> so focus, especially ladies, focus here. So I was praying, Lord, please put the words in my mouth. Let it be your words, not mine. And I prayed a short prayer. After I said amen, my dear friends, I saw that her cheeks were filled with tears. And she gave me a hug, a very, very tight hug, that hug that will make your eyes pop out. Like, mm. <laughs> and friends, when she gave me that hug, she said, Jem, thank you so much. I really, really needed this. And it said, she said, it has been a blessing meeting you. I said goodbye. While I was walking like 50 meters away, I noticed something. That is a different face. That has so much peace. That has so much joy this time. I went back again. And I said, Miss Mel, I said, yes, can we take another selfie? Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to see the selfie? We don't have time. <laughs> okay. Do not show this, please. Okay, so that's not it. 
That's her. That's her on your left. I'm the one on the right. Okay. <laughs> And then I realize, my dear friends, this is one thing I realize. That when God is the one leading, that when God is the one directing, even the most boring situation would become an adventure. Even the most ordinary part of our lives would become extraordinary because we have an extraordinary, supernatural, amazing, wonderful, loving God. Amen? Amen? And then when I look back, I realize how many moments like this have I let me pass by? How many moments like this have I not experienced because I thought I knew my way? How many moments like this that I've wasted is because instead of trusting God to lead me, I was trying to lead my life. Friends, you know the thought that we read last time, when God lets man have his own way, it's the darkest hour of his life. Friends, there's no point, there's no point in having our way when we don't have God's way. We miss out on an adventure that the Lord wants to give us. We miss out on golden opportunities that the Lord has for each and every one of us. So tonight, I just like to make this appeal. If it is your desire to tell God, Lord, I want your way, not mine. I want to be in your presence. Not my own direction right now. Not my own choice. Because I know my choice is a foolish choice. Even, even, even if I meant well, yours is still the best. If that is your desire, I want you to join me here in this pulpit. Come close. Praise God. There's no point of really living life without God. Would you agree? There's there's no really point in living life without his direction. He offered it to us, and he said, I will instruct you. I will teach you. I will guide you. Let him. Amen? Amen. There's one regret that I have in my life, that I did not give him my all while I was still your age. I'm quite envious of you right now, guys because you are still in this age to experience more adventures with God. And I praise God that it was not too late that he gave me an adventure with him. And he desires for each one of you to have this because the only way to show people that, that we have a living God is when we experience that living God in our lives. Let him have you. Let him have the best years of your life. You will never regret it. You will never regret it. There's a lot of people around you who needs to see the evidence of the powerful God that we serve. Let them see it in our lives. If we have to brag about something, we have to brag about Him. Amen? Let's kneel down for a word of prayer.